like actual excited butterflies. Oh, that's so <laughs> Which fun. is really nice. Because part <laughs> like, you know, when for me, um, when I was writing Luna, I wanted to write a section about like beauty and the moon. Yeah. And I just didn't get around to it. There wasn't enough time. And like it just the book kept expanding, expanding anyway as it was. And I was like, oh my, like podcast, perfect opportunity to bring this in. And I was like, who can I talk to? Of course. I'm gonna get Katie. <laughs> <laughs> well, not get her. I'll see if you want to invite me. <laughs> oh my god, no, I'm so happy to be here. I was like so flattered when you messaged me and one of my therapists, Polly, she was mm. like, I love the podcast. She was like, I can't, I've just left them. They were like, oh, we can't believe you're going on it. We can't wait to listen. <laughs> oh, reset. Yeah, it's going to be brilliant because I think you're someone that I follow on Instagram who, like, I just love everything that you share around skincare, but it feels like so much more than just skincare as yeah. well. Like, how would you, oh, and like, for backstory, like, this is Katie White, <laughs> founder <laughs> of like Relax London. And is it the skincare school? Yeah. So, founder of Relax which is our skin mm-hmm. studio in Hackney, Relax Skin School which is a school where I train new facialists so it's an accredited course where I train facialists and then the Relax Skin Store which is our um, skin store where we sell <laughs> lovely skin products. Yeah. And I was like looking before I, after I was doing my research I was like looking on your shelf and I was like oh my god it's so nice like to have I think nowadays as well places aren't just like this one spot one kind of like it's not just about the shop or the treatment it's the whole experience and how it comes to life with like social media and um like the website as well and I I guess with lockdown like everybody's had to pivot and have (laughs) other options haven't they definitely so we actually had the e-commerce set up before Mm. lockdown um but that came about really organically because we work with loads of different brands and I've always wanted to work with different brands. I really hated how the skincare industry was like, you go for like, uh, like Elemis facial or Dermalogica facial, like a very branded facial, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is fine because you know what you're getting and you know, if you love the products and that's great, but not every brand in the world will be able to cater to every single person. Mm. And I've always found from my like personal experience that it can be quite pushy, like, they're not open to you using other products and like I don't know you'll have the treatment then they're just like really trying to hard sell and I just hated that I was like that's awful like there are so many cool products like no one just uses like one brand religiously I certainly don't I love beauty I love mixing and matching I love like trying new things Mm. why does it have like why does it have to be like so brand focused rather than person focused it Mm. should be about the person the client not about the product And so I never used to retail because I was like, I don't want to be that pushy therapist. Like, it's just not cool. But then all of my clients were like, where do we buy like these lovely products that you created for your treatments? And I was Mm. like, oh, I actually like, you have to get one from here and one from there. And they were like, can you just start? So that we started the e-commerce and we sell all of these gorgeous products. And yeah, it's nice. Some of my clients were like, it's nice to not have to like research the ingredients to be able to trust that everything there is like natural and organic ethical like all of the packaging that um are the brands that we work with are either recyclable or biodegradable and like they do loads to offset their carbon footprint and yeah so it's it's nice to be able to like trust that everything here is good Mm. I think that's that's so important because I'm like on a massive I say massive like I did have a cake last night so not that massive (laughs) but like I'm on a, like a se- like semi health kick, and I'm just so into supplements at the moment. Yeah. And I've been spending so much time like researching them, and it is so nice to just go. And like you said, with e- with every any product, not just beauty products. Like I think a lot of companies ha- well, they will have their products or a product that really suits you, but not yeah. the whole range will suit you. Yeah. And I think looking at supplements, it's like, oh, which one? Like, what's? And then I'm like looking at like comparing the the like for what is it like a protein thing that I was looking at um like the how many grams of protein you get like what the ingredients are and it's just it takes so much time and it's so yeah so nice to be able to just go to one place and know that that's already been done and it's all products that are being used yeah definitely 
yeah definitely and I think as well like it's such a confused I mean like beauty is a confusing landscape Mm. supplements are probably even more of a confusing landscape because like at least for beauty you can put something on your skin and if it feels nice then that then you know like oh well I like I'm enjoying using this Mm. whereas supplements you do actually have to take them for like a little bit of time before seeing results Mm. and quite often in my clients I see that people don't really know why they're taking the supplements or like (laughs) (laughs) or like they'll take them for a week and be like I'm still the same person it doesn't work Mm, (laughs) like that's that was never going to be the intended result but I think it's really good that you're reading the ingredient list like I see so many clients that just read the label so like the front lips they say it's a vitamin c oh this is this says vitamin c on it so Mm. it must be good but you know it's just like any food packaging or beauty products or anything you need to read the label and actually see like what the ingredients are so it's really good that you're comparing and contrasting but yeah it's yeah. a confusing market <laughs> yeah, it's good that, well, now I know where to come for to, like but I with beauty products I kind of tend to find like I'm very monogamous in that way like I will find something that I like and I will use that to death yeah, yeah. And, like often I get like beauty brands like getting in touch like do you want to try my product I'm like ah, I've got what I need <laughs> like, it works <laughs> it works for me and but yeah like, I can go that's such a good sign because what works works and like I say this to everyone I'm like what works works like Mm. if you love it and you're repurchasing then that's like such a brilliant sign like Mm. I'm the same I've looked for like years and years and years to find products that I'm really happy with and now like my empties every month look exactly the same like there'll be like slight tweaks depending on weather Mm. um or like you know yeah, like, or if you can't get in what you want, like yeah. if it's sold out and you left it, if you're like me and you've left it the last minute, it's like, okay, well, what else, like, what else can I try? Or if you see a brand yeah. that you like the look of that's new, sometimes I'm like, oh, I've run out of um, like my skin, my oil that I'm using, but this new brand's kind of, it's like an independent brand and like, I'll try them. And, and, and like I said, I was talking about um, before we started recording, like Disciple, because all of their skincare is kind of like a mind, like, a well mindful kind of like well-being yeah ethos behind it so I thought oh like, I'll try it and then I think there are so many more like you said, different brands that aren't about the upsell yeah these high-end things that are kind of more about the person and the individual exactly and I think that that is what like the consumer is starting to demand and I think like when I transitioned from being in premium beauty to um like in the corporate side of premium beauty mm. to working in this industry it was because I became like so just like disillusioned and I just thought that the like just bored of the way that things were. Ha- it was just like we were saying like just mm. so product focused like mm. and every year there was a new step so like you would have like a 10-step regime or a 12-step yeah. regime <laughs> and it's like all just to feed the bottom line because they had like a new product launch last year so they have to have a new one this year and it's like this isn't anything to do with the consumer's skin like mm-hmm. this isn't anything to do with how they feel or how these products make them feel like that's not they're so far removed from that that it's not even put in the marketing campaigns and it's like when you hear things like disciple where if you some you you were telling me about them you summed it up in one sentence mm. and you said these products are you know obviously they're skincare products but yeah. with the intention of helping mental health helping mm. mental well-being helping the way you feel like that's only one sentence about them and that's the first thing that you saw whereas mm. like you would never say that about like a l'oreal owned brand or, <laughs> or a lauder owned brand you just wouldn't it's no. not what they're doing so i think that's great i think that you know more the consumer wants more from their Mm. products and I think that people love beauty and I think I love beauty and like it's there to be enjoyed like I absolutely love my skincare regime and like I love like Sunday spending more time on it I love like helping people find things that they really enjoy Mm. and that will bring them like the same kind of like peace that I get from doing my regime but it's a really confusing industry and Mm. yeah like I said I think the consumer wants more than just a face cream now they want it to be working in a holistic way and to be like a wonderful experience for Mm. them and I think I mean even just as you're saying like how much you love what you do like that comes through in everything that you do even as you're saying (laughs) you're like totally lit up everything that you do like even like when like during lockdown I did your um face massage workshop I loved it and like because we had the replay I don't know maybe you can see how many times or maybe don't look how many times I've followed it <laughs> it was like getting me through because and just helping me like touch in but even like with that like you were just you're just so into it and I think that's like that's kind of it's really engaging as well I think when someone's really passionate about what they do it kind of 
you're like yeah like that's who I want I want to learn with or who I want to do things with um or they're the one that knows because they actually care you know they're passionate about it not just for work but in their own personal life yeah yeah oh thanks <laughs> how, did, how did you uh, I, like, I always say when someone gives me a compliment I'm like oh is it like short circuit I don't know what to do now <laughs> Um, I'm glad you enjoyed it (laughs) yeah no I loved it um what I was gonna say but how did you get into beauty like what was your kind of like journey from kind of getting into it and then starting Relax London or not Relax London like Relax Studio and everything yeah so I didn't have a job Mm -hmm. because (laughs) I had graduated from uni and I was like oh god like I need to find a job Mm. um and I went to a recruitment company. I mean, I had always loved skincare, but I think that at this point I was probably more interested in makeup and that kind of side of things. But like, I have no talent to be a makeup artist. So that was never gonna, <laughs> <laughs> that was never gonna happen. Um, so yeah, I like, liked cosmetics. I liked mm. beauty. It's something that I'd always been interested in. I went for um to a recruitment agency to find a job and they were like oh actually like um this beauty company is interviewing like do you want to go for the interview and I got the job so I started working there and I loved Mm. it like I worked there I started as an account assistant and like worked my way up so it's like um working in like a sales role like Mm -hmm. wholesale role I had I worked with like loads of amazing accounts like all of the I had because I was like the most junior person I had all of the online accounts so like oh. feel unique cult beauty um look fantastic like really fun brands mm. really fun retailers and like all of the buyers were so nice and my boss was amazing and I had the best time like I really did enjoy it considering mm. that it was like a sales role like target driven like it was like anything where where you have targets I think is, like mm. a little can be stressful but like I loved my team like I'm still really good friends with all of them and I, everything was good but I was like I don't want to do this like I would look at my sales director and I was like I, that is not the life that I want in 15 years I want to be self-employed so at the same time I was suffering with my skin like I mm-hmm. had acne but I was also getting like eczema that I hadn't had since I was a child I was getting mm-hmm. hives and I like went down the road of trying to find someone to help me so I like went for a few facials and like I was like very very product like buy these products buy these products mm-hmm. and I was like well I've got lots of products like <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> I've got a lot of products yeah I don't really need your products I've got all the mm. products like I get them from work like I've got loads of products that are basically the same as these products I don't think that products are the problem like I think it's more than that I think it's like my lifestyle like I was working really hard I was going out Mm. a lot like I guess I probably was quite stressed like I'm Mm. from the countryside and suddenly I was like working on Oxford Street Mm. and like living in Camden and it was just like a lot going on and um then I like went down the GP route as well like got offered antibiotics the pill like all of these Mm. things and I was like just kind of getting it from all angles and I was talking about skincare all day at work and I was like there's just a big part of this puzzle missing like nobody is helpful nobody's actually helpful no one's like actually saying you are getting all of these issues with your skin because you're stressed and you don't sleep or you know because you're not eating properly no one was even touching on that subject and I remember at work like starting to talk about nutrition and how like what we eat is really important and everyone was like yeah it's not really related and I was like no like I think it is and like Mm. obviously now it's that this wasn't like five or six years ago Mm now everybody knows and everybody knows how important nutrition is but even like such a short time ago it wasn't really as openly talked about like I guess like there weren't like Instagram wasn't what it was today there wasn't access to so (laughs) many like nutritionists or like wellness Mm. influencers or like it just wasn't such commonplace and I was like I think there's a gap in the market for someone who is an accessible price point like Mm -hmm. the same price as like the other like normal facials like not celebrity facialists and that is really working to identify the root cause and support the body from the inside out and I was like Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be that person like I want to be (laughs) (laughs) self-employed I might be helpful so I went down to four days a week at work I started training as a nutritionist and then after a couple of months at nutrition school I was like no this isn't enough like I need to be able to offer like a 360 approach so I quit my job completely went to beauty school and then uh started working as a self-employed therapist while I finished my nutrition course because that was like three years Mm -hmm. so I graduated from that in 2017 I had a client base by the time I graduated and yeah I just carried on doing that and now we're here (laughs) and did you you go to open yet were you there open yeah yeah well I did I actually 
came the day you left so I took your bed oh really? what, what, yeah. what, with um Joe yeah yeah oh. <laughs> literally you were like on the flight out in the morning we like may have even been at the airport at the same start probably in London a bit later than you yeah but Crazy. she was like um yeah I was like oh who was here before and she was like tomorrow but she left this morning yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's so bizarre um yeah like and so um because yeah I think you were there at the same time as my friend Rachel who's like Effie Nails Yes, I was. We got there on the same day. Mm. She was only there for like yeah, two or Because <laughs> we were weeks, supposed so. to be there at the same time. Uh, but it, wasn't, you know, well, like, it wasn't very organised, was it? And they kept changing the dates, <laughs> <laughs> things like that. So Rachel and I were like, great, we're going to be there at the same time. And then it was that like they changed it and then we were like, literally opposite. I was like, well, yeah. It is oh, it you, is, but... you literally just missed each other. Mm. Yeah, but That's and you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I know, but we're here. I feel like our paths have crossed actually quite a few times. Because really? Were you, yeah, were you ever doing anything at the refinery? No, but I went, I did go in once to speak to them about using the room there, but I. Oh, just, maybe I that was it. Yeah, but I kind of, it was like, it's just going to be too noisy. So I went, yeah. well, what she think? She said one room, I oh, know I won't say that just in case. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I think one room was by the, um, I've room. made that the sound, yeah. by the hit studio. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a gym ultimately. Yeah. I think that's why, like, the treatment rooms were really nice. Yeah, they're but beautiful, so, but sound wise. Literally, I've said it so many times, like I did a skin school last weekend mm. and I like, um, we have a little bit of the day on like, starting a business like how to get started and um I like told them my story and I was like I worked at the refinery Mm. for like ages for like almost three years and I was like I honestly cannot believe that anybody came back to see me because that room was so noisy like I remember (laughs) on a Monday morning there was like Monday morning madness like a hit class with this girl who was like (laughs) screaming at her um class and (laughs) she would like always open the door because she was like yeah the room's so hot and I'm like oh my god this is so stressful but like the clients didn't mind I think that like I mean they came back I can't believe they came back like if that had been my facials must have been obviously (laughs) were incredible but I think as well I know when I've done it's so hard to find the right place to do treatments like for me for like crystal healing and Reiki and like when I've done treatments in other places um like there's always it's just never quiet enough but people get when they're having a treatment they're so relaxed they because you're just like oh i know <laughs> cat with like your hair up on that yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me. and then and then after you're like, i'm so sorry about that and they were like oh like didn't even notice because they're so relaxed i know and they're just in a different like they're not worrying about things it's mm. like you're hosting them aren't you you're yeah. like facilitating the space and like obviously there will always be things outside of your control mm. in a city where you're not like completely isolated yeah. so i do think that people are quite i mean also i sometimes think that like if i went for a treatment and i heard people talk you know walking past and talking or something mm. i wouldn't be like oh my whole treatment was completely ruined like no. you know you're just used to it aren't you yeah oh, they, it's just you're making me think when I was went to Cambodia and my boyfriend and I went for a massage and they were just like playing like house music like next to it <laughs> <laughs> and I was like this is not relaxing at all like because it wasn't even good house music <laughs> yeah 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 no, that's quite intense <laughs> I do think yeah when you're relaxed it kind of um it really yeah you kind of you tune out you like you said you pick up on different things I think yeah definitely mm-hmm. like any tiny noise even now at work like the tiniest noise, like a dog barking in the far distance I'm like oh <laughs> 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 someone take that dog away <laughs> <laughs> but I think you just it's it's so different I think when you're holding that space because you want it to be per that experience to be perfect for them yeah. so you're kind of you're on high alert for for anything aren't you to kind of make sure yeah definitely but then when you hear them like little snores coming up from underneath the LED like like, I think it's all okay (laughs) yeah that's when you know like when the 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 breathing gets like heavier yeah um, they kind of like yeah just drop in but yeah um with your like beauty treatments like it isn't just about like you've got that like you said you just mentioned like the LED face mask things you've got that things isn't the right word but (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we've got all sorts of things mm. like we've got all sorts of things going on because yeah. how did you get into it because you do acupuncture facial acupuncture as well don't you 
yeah cosmetic acupuncture and also like auricular acupuncture mm. so I try and do like um like one training or like two trainings a year mm. um and so far they have always been in like beauty things but now things are like shifting slightly I'm like do I need to do a training in HR maybe <laughs> I do <laughs> um but yeah so last year I did two great ones like I did the cosmetic acupuncture and auricular acupuncture which is amazing so you do work on a couple of acupuncture points and then the rest of it is like cosmetic so mm -hmm. um acupuncture points could be like for anything to do with like digestion or like hormone balancing mm -hmm. stress it's like amazing for stress like loads of relaxation points on the face and on the ears um kind of anything and mm. then cosmetic is like cosmetic which is like obviously my true love so <laughs> I, <laughs> so you use the needles to create a micro trauma uh the skin thinks it's been damaged but the damage is like microscope like you can't even it's completely microscopic yeah and so the skin starts to heal itself really really quickly so it just promotes like really quick cell turnover of mm -hmm. like collagen and elastin so it's great for scarring it's great for like wound healing breakouts um fine lines it's great for tightening the skin and it's really mm. effective like I absolutely love it I do it to myself <laughs> yeah I've seen you on like Instagram <laughs> it's like popping it's casually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it doesn't hurt like no. it's pain it's like almost some, you because they're so tiny you put them in with tweezers mm. like you hold the handle with tweezers and just pop them in so it's not that different actually to just like plucking your eyebrows yeah um which like you know it hurts a tiny bit but it's not anything that would put you off nice. um and then I did another training last year which was sculptural facelifting and intraoral mm, yeah. massage so like working inside the mouth and working to just like lift and tone all the muscles and again it's amazing like we hold so much tension in our face mm. so many people clench their jaws um I think actually a lot of people do it when they're awake not just when they're asleep like yeah. I know that I certainly do and like frown and like scrunch everything up when you're like looking at your phone or looking at emails so mm -hmm. that release is just like so amazing it just your face just feels like so light and like it just changes your like brain I don't know how it works like yeah I guess it's just <laughs> you said you're just releasing that tension so that's going to take the fog out of your brain yeah well, definitely and just like I don't know people like look different afterwards I'm not saying that their face looks dramatically different it's like <laughs> <laughs> they still look like the same people but it's like when people come in like super stressed and like quite often like you know you're late and you've been on a call with someone mm. who's like saying something annoying and you know you people arrive and they're like it's almost like one more thing to do like oh now I've got to have a facial mm. and they just leave like looking completely different like some like lighter like some worries have been taken mm. away and I really think it's just like a lot of relieving releasing all of the tension in the face it's like releasing like something emotional isn't it yeah I think <laughs> um, I remember when I was in like um back like back before like 2020 happened like I was spending like yeah. more time in Bali I remember like years ago this guy like saying like there's something that's like the Bali effect where like when you've been there for a while you do just look younger because I guess yeah. you are relaxed and you are like that tension's not there and I do think just being stressed can make you look I mean it's, I yeah mean, I, don't, I don't know I don't want to say I'll make you look younger and older like there's nothing wrong with looking older yeah but that that's that's it just changes how your face looks doesn't it completely it's just like if your shoulders are like really really tight and they're all like hunched up and you know it's it's exactly the same just like when people are like taking care of themselves and like just not driving themselves to burnout I mm. think and it, you're right it's not like older or younger it's like drained and refreshed I yeah. think like, yeah. it's not really yeah like it's, not, it's not about it's not so much about age it's like just like I mean I do it like when I've been working loads I wake up and I'm like oh my god I look like haggard I like yeah. you feel like you have aged but it's like all you need is a cup of tea in a bath and a yeah. nap and you'll probably be fine <laughs> yeah or if I like my uh, like even when I did your facial workshop like you, you we did like one half of the face and then you're like no look at the uh, no 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 and you can see yeah. the difference and like that it does like you said it change it's not it doesn't radically change your face but there's this shift that just makes yeah. you look glowier and fresher and just more at peace I guess <laughs> and also just like feel better like mm. whenever I do like any facial massage straight afterwards I'm like oh my god like my face just feels so much better 
and then that makes me feel better about ever I don't know like these little like bits of beauty like doing something for yourself I think is really powerful and mm. I had a teacher who was like you know I know there's a lot of this like whether something works or doesn't work I mean a lot of the stuff that we do have had has had clinical trials around it yeah. so we know that it works but it's like what does work mean to people and mm. it's like what are you trying to achieve like with something like acne like it's very the end goal is very clear like yeah someone Literally. has an acne and they don't want to have acne yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> but like I see a lot of clients who like there's nothing that they can put their finger on that's particularly wrong with their skin or like mm. the way they look and it's like they're tired they're worn out they're overworked like they're probably not taking care of themselves maybe drinking too much obviously this has been a very challenging year for everyone mm. everyone's sick of being in front of laptops sick of having nowhere to go being trapped at home and it's just that feeling of like not feeling your best mm. and I think that these like tiny little rituals or routines or things that you do for yourself have like so much power and I had a teacher who was like it's the intention that you put behind anything like mm -hmm. it's the intention that you're working with like you have stopped and you've taken time in your day to do something for you whether that's you doing it to yourself like this uh, facial massage yeah. or like going for a treatment like you've decided that you deserve something and you're doing something with the intention of feeling better and I think that is just so powerful and mm -hmm. like works or not works like you will feel like it makes you feel great I think yeah. it does I think as well just having that time to just plug back into yourself or, and be in like especially when you are like having a facial or a treatment or doing going to a yoga class or doing something or having a healing treatment you're like you're in receiving mode and often like and I bet you are all the time as well <laughs> it's like what you do, <laughs> you're always just in giving mode you're, like, holding space for other people you're making sure that they're okay creating content creating videos of like how to make <laughs> how to do <laughs> skin at home like that you're always like in giving giving and I think when we just plug in even if it's just for an hour to be in receiving mode and that might just be literally you're not doing anything and someone is like putting some cosmetic acupuncture in your face or <laughs> you're I, I went and had a, a float tank I didn't have a, that's not the right word to say it, but I went for a float in a float tank <laughs> yeah day. and like they make such a difference for me because you just it's like sensory deprivation you're floating and yeah and after I just felt so much lighter and I noticed that I didn't want to check my phone afterwards whereas I've got into this like really bad habit of like just keep incessantly checking it for no reason or going to check it and then being like, no, 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 I don't want to be checking it. <laughs> Come away. Yeah. 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 Toing and throwing. And I noticed that like, it was so obvious. Like after I was like, don't, I'm not even bothered about looking at my phone. Like I felt that relaxed. Yeah. It's so important for us to have that time for ourselves, isn't it? It's so important. Like it's so, so, so important. It's important for everyone. And I think like women in particular, like not to discount anything that men do, but like mm. often women are like, we do give a lot. Like you want to make things lovely for people. You know, you want to mm. like take care of your partner, of your kids, of your friends. Like you're always like listening and hearing and you know, it's, uh, it's wonderful to mm -hmm. have those connections. But at the same time, like you can't pour from an empty cup. So everybody, yeah. <laughs> like no one is immune to tiredness. No one is mm. immune to stress. No one, you know, can go through their whole lives without taking a moment for themselves and not feeling guilty about it anyway. Mm. Like we, I think as therapists, like, yeah, you do give a lot. It's your job, but like, it's a great job. Yeah. And like, our client like our clients are all such good vibes but like I have worked in other places where like they haven't been such good vibes and it can be draining like mm. you can really feel drained and I think it's so important like I have such solid like self-care rituals that I like no matter how busy I am like there are so many things that will just fall off the face of the earth for me if I'm busy yeah. like exercise <laughs> like you know cooking but like my boyfriend does most of the cooking so uh, he'll be oh, like you never, cook, you never <laughs> cook anyway <yeah. laughs> but like <laughs> you know having lunch at work and stuff like that like I find those things quite easy to just let drop off and I always feel worse for it but there are some things that I like never let go which mm -hmm. is like my morning shower and washing my hair every morning which is mm -hmm. just like the best 15 minutes of my day, yeah. <laughs> <Any> day. <laughs> and like every Sunday like doing my skincare regime 
I'll like never go to bed without like washing my face and putting on like even if I, I like do it literally from my bed I'm like horizontal and I'm like <laughs> putting my oil on and it just means that I'm gonna like sleep well and I mm. think it's so important and then I have like regular massages and stuff like that because like our work is quite physical mm. so there are things that it's like you just can't deny yourself them because mm. for me I'm like if I want to carry on living the way that I do if I want to work and if I want to like you know like create the content and like speak to our clients and like feel good and like support my team like I also need to feel good and like I think that everybody should do that for themselves yeah. always because it's so important yeah, me like anyone so anyone that needed to hear that <laughs> you know, I'm, like, I'm gonna do this like because I think it's, like, it's so easy like I had this big realization um like at the end of last week where I have just been in in work mode and really struggling to switch off and just felt like I've been on this like self-imposed hamster wheel you know and you just feel like you can't get off and then I did for it was the new moon in Libra so I'd created this tarot spread that I'd shared on Instagram and I did I always do them on myself as well and um it just came up so much where like I was so out of balance and not doing the things that I love and that like re really do recharge me so I've got my basic self-care things that I do every day but that's kind of like a that's like brushing my teeth for me now. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, 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 journaling, yeah that's like brushing my teeth like that's not it's not enough um and I kind of ended up um booking I stayed at the Hoxton on Saturday oh night no. like on my own and like went for, oh a, nice God, went for a float amazing. tank went for a float tank then stayed there had a nice dinner read a book and just chilled and then um went to the Tate Modern like the next day and I was just like oh I feel like me again and it's just that I mean it ha we get I think we it we can lose it so easily because we get busy I think it's 2020 like this year I think for so many people it's they've kind of been hustling harder because it's like 2020 like lockdown you need the money like we don't know what's going to be happening like there's so much going on and more, like you were saying like more people are working from home so boundaries get blurred don't they so blurred yeah definitely definitely but, yeah so and I think it's just like it just it kind of creeps in and then you're like how, how, who am I <laughs> yeah I know it is really hard and I think as well like in non-2020 in non-covid mm. times like we're very much a society of like looking towards the future like I don't and I'm like so guilty of it like I don't mm. think we're very present yeah. and I think that we're always like and even in our conversation it's like oh are you going away anywhere like have you got anything planned like what are mm. you doing for Christmas like we're always looking to the future which I don't think is necessarily like an awful thing and I think it's great to have things to look forward to. Yeah, I think that's course. lovely. But I think that it can sometimes detract from the day, from like yeah. today. And it is almost like we are on this hamster wheel and we are just like waiting for the next like moment, like the next holiday or the next like trip or the next whatever, mm. next party, next dinner, next whatever's coming. And actually like this year, all of those things were taken away from yeah. everyone. <laughs> like oh, God, nobody, can't do yeah, <laughs> nobody had them, like all holidays were cancelled. Mm. Like no one was leaving their house. And it's like, how else? And it's really like, it has been, I believe it's been challenging for everyone mm. employed, self-employed, living alone, living with their kids yeah. like I think it's been it's been challenging no one has got through this like mm. super easily because nice. a lot of like our freedom was taken away from us and the things that we normally depend on for like that little recharge or that little bit of happiness were just mm. like snatched from us so it's been really interesting to see like the ways that people have like had to change and having like these little moments instead of like you know two weeks in Mexico or yeah. whatever was <laughs> like, <laughs> meant to be coming up mm. um but yeah it is so important it does make you feel just so so much better mm. I like always this is something that we always talk about like to my clients when, when they're like oh I'm feeling really stressed and like what are you doing that you enjoy mm. I think as well sometimes self-care or like I don't love the word self-care but like whatever self-care like whatever makes mm. you like what other words do you use for it instead I don't know like I like to call them like practices or rituals mm. maybe that's a bit too like again like I think a lot of the language used around wellness mm. is actually a bit of a barrier to entry mm, um okay. because I think that people are like oh well I'm not the kind of person that like practices or I'm not yeah. the kind of person that like has rituals or mm. like you know but 
all of it, it doesn't matter what you call it. All it is, is just something that you enjoy and making time for it and, mm. you know, knowing that you deserve it. So I think like a lot of people feel like to be successful or to get to their goals, they just have to like punish themselves. And I think everybody is guilty of it, but really like, it's just carving out that time to do things that you enjoy that make you feel whatever it is like going mm. for a walk like hanging out with your friends like whatever it doesn't even matter what it is just creating time for it and knowing that you do deserve it I think mm. is like so important we always talk about it with our clients yeah I'm like what are you doing to like help manage your stress sometimes it can be like a bit of a checklist like I have to meditate I have to journal yeah. I have to do this and it's like if you're not enjoying it don't do it yeah like, I say that to my <laughs> clients all the time when people are like yeah I'm doing this doing all the things like yeah. to manifest whatever it is and it's like yeah but how do you feel about that like yeah, how, yeah, if, yeah it's, exactly. if it's a checklist and also I think that's where I was reading oh who is it do you know Emma Gannon so I was like her newsletter, she was talking about um, balance and she's like, I don't believe yeah. in balance, but I think that the imbalance is part of the balance. Yeah. Like every, and like working for me, having an understanding of balance comes from the phases of the moon and how mm -hmm. we feel differently at different times of the moon. And when we felt all of those things, that's balance. Yeah, like yeah. When we yeah. felt that existential crisis of like, what am I doing? <laughs> that is part of the balance because when you surrender to that and like open into kind of like what's coming up for you, that's when you come into the next bit of like, I know what I'm doing. This is what I'm excited about. This is what I need. And I yeah. think we have to have those, you know, those mo like those moments to kind of just keep checking in and keep keep pivoting and find Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And like, life isn't like an upwards trajectory yeah. at all it's or not just like a destination of like you're gonna get here <laughs> completely it is about the journey and the journey can mm, sometimes yeah. be hard and like you say like having the crisis is <laughs> which, like that's just like a Monday morning for me <laughs> 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 It's, it's a, yeah I feel you. <laughs> but then like other things do come out of them and it forces mm. you out of your comfort zone I think yeah. that's really important and that's where the like, growth happens and the good stuff completely. because it's when you that's the opportunity to reclaim reclaim it and think actually yeah what does make me what makes me me yeah I think because I was like I was journaling about it on Sunday morning and just thinking like what is it that what does what does success mean to me and mm -hmm. actually it's like it's not about the book deals or <laughs> the you know how many followers I've got or how many likes it's for me actually success is that moment of like being in a hotel room and just being able to read on my own like yeah. that's, that's when I feel like I'm winning <laughs> like, and it just puts it into perspective it's like hang on a minute like I'm hustling and or I'm not even like hustling I'm just got really bad time management I think <laughs> like <laughs> it's not oh even God. that um, Me too. it's just horrendous <laughs> time management but I think as well it's like pushing when I'm tired and thinking yeah. just when I when I've got this done then I can have a break but actually yeah. it's like hang on I'm struggling here I need the break so that then that will be so much easier and that will get done a lot quicker yeah 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 definitely but I think it's human nature like I was taught like slightly different but of the same vein I was yeah. talking about this with um my boyfriend I'm trying to launch some beauty tools and one oh, of them okay. is... I was gonna ask you I was like, <laughs> yeah. would you do your own like, beauty like, line <laughs> yeah maybe yeah but I think I'm gonna start with the tools and see where it goes but mm. one of them is like a little micro needling device so it's like needles so there is like a slight element of it's really not painful the needles mm. are like 0.6 millimeters and they're like as thin as a hair but you yeah. get like a little sting when you use it yeah but um and we were like trying to think of a name for it and I like some of the names I was like they sound a bit like painful like I don't <laughs> want people to be scared and then yeah. my boyfriend was like there's something in that though like people like to suffer for success like people like to you know like when you're mm. like having beauty treatments like or using skincare and it's like it hurts or it stings or it's like painful like a peel mm. or like something like more invasive or aggressive or like a really vigorous massage that's when people think like oh it's working like yeah it's like no with, pain like, no gain isn't it exactly like same with exercise and then like you can I guess that you can apply that to like your work ethic as well like waiting until like you're on la your last legs to keep on pushing as if that's going to get you one step closer but really mm. it's not like it's just going to wear you out like yeah. and I think we all just need to practice a bit of like self-compassion don't yeah, we sometimes totally. it's like very easy I worked with a coach who's amazing Ariadne mm. and she um 
would always say like if you were your own boss like would you like if yeah like would you like your boss like yeah if, in the relationship oh my gosh, with yourself yeah, yeah, and I'm yeah. like I've had oh my these God, conversations no. with myself before <laughs> yeah. like if I, I if my boss would t- was if in my old hairdressing job if my boss was making me do, I tell I tell them to fuck off <laughs> like, yeah, no I, know. I, I know I was like I would have quit a long time ago mm. like this is not a good way but then like obviously people never apply those kind of things no. to themselves I think are quite difficult yeah um, but it's all part of the process isn't it yeah but also <laughs> I think the lines get bl- when you do what you love the lines get blurred yeah so, yeah, so it's not like even though you're being hard on yourself because maybe like for me in my case I end up working till quite late yeah because like I, I actually do work better later at night yeah. um but it's also because I've got to get these things done and again bad time management <laughs> but <laughs> when you love it you don't mind so if yeah if, like, again if in my hairdressing job they're like tomorrow you need to stay up till like one o'clock doing a full head of highlights I'd be like nah like yeah yeah, yeah yeah but yeah. for me when it's like all right I'm writing this content or I'm getting a podcast ready it's because I enjoy it like yeah if I didn't want to do it I wouldn't stay up until that late I just yeah, yeah. And say, oh, I'll do that another day or not do it at all but because I love it that's why I end up piling up my plate with like these ideas like, yeah I want to do this I want to do this and then it's just not enough yeah. hours I know it is tricky and like I completely know like I feel like my mind is always so full of like all the things that I want to do but then I think that like the part of you that needs to like protect yourself needs to come in and be like this is unachievable yeah because, <laughs> there are... <laughs> because you need to sleep and you... yeah <laughs> so, like why don't you take a couple of things and like put the rest aside mm. for them? but yeah like I think it is definitely a practice and I think like now with my team and stuff like that I'm Mm. having to be like I need to like think about what where my energies need to be best spent to do all of the things that I need to do before doing like the more exciting things I actually want to do because Mm. I think things can like balls can start to drop which isn't good so I feel like they're kind of holding me a bit more accountable to to things which is good rather than being like I'm going to do a hundred things at once and they're all going to be done badly. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I think it's just, like you said, it's just prioritizing. What do I really want to do and choosing maybe even, not even just one thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And just do it really well. And think, okay. And even as I'm listening to this, as I'm listening to myself (laughs) saying this, I'm like, hang on, take your own advice. (laughs) Like, maybe don't like actually just do all right I'm gonna have to do this now accountability (laughs) but just choose one thing and just think I can give that the space that it needs and feel good about that and don't because I think there's this thing like I'm an Aries like my sun sign is Aries so that's just go 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 like really fiery really excited like and I I think for me it's just remembering when to stop because that's when the burnout comes because I think for me it's just too much of a good thing like I can't complain like I love my job I love what I do I'm just trying to do too much yeah but trying to just kind of like yeah maybe just choose one thing yeah yeah yeah, (laughs) yeah. because it's hard because you see other like you think oh well I should be doing this and we put these time limits on ourselves don't we but then what is like what is that? I know. I was just speaking about this with someone this morning. So I'm 30. I'll be 31 in January. Right. And I was like, oh God, like I haven't achieved anything. <laughs> and I'm 30. And it's like, realistically, I have another 35 at least years of my working career. So yeah. why does everything have to be done in the next four weeks? Like, yeah. it's, completely, <laughs> it's completely like unrealistic and unreasonable. Mm. And it does like, again, I know what you mean. Like when you love your job, and you love sharing and like I like have so many things that I'm like oh god it would be so cool to do this and I think mm. people would really enjoy this and like yeah yeah you feel excited about it but again like there is plenty of time like not everything needs to get done today so it's pointless putting that pressure on yourself but I think it is difficult yeah. um not to do it wait so my moon sign is oh, in yeah. Aries what yeah. does that mean I would say so you're basically because <laughs> yeah, so before when we were getting ready for the call like, I'd message Katie and I'd like said what's just in case like what's your moon sign what's your like do, in, couldn't not everybody knows but so your moon sign is like how you are emotionally what nourishes you um how you connect like what love means to you and what makes you feel safe and secure um but yeah. also like how you see love so when you're an aries moon that's like fi- like you're kind of you're emotionally you're how i am like how well so my son like your sun sign is like your ego and how you're seen yeah but your moon sign is how you are like your feeling side so how i explain it is like your sun sign is like what people see when they like their first impression of you 
but yeah. the moon sign is like the side of you that people get to know when like you go on holiday with them <laughs> you know or you ah, okay, lived cool. with them it's like that other <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. More, the softer side the more vulnerable side but when your moon in Aries so Aries is fire it's init- it's the first sign of the zodiac wheel so it's all about initiation so when your yeah. moon is in Aries like you actually like action so what yeah. makes you feel safe and secure is like a challenge <laughs> and then <laughs> action and like making things happen and like that excitement and that spontaneity and feeling excited. Whereas someone else that would say, for example, like a cancer moon, like moon in cancer, like they would be like more about being at home and like what makes them feel safe is like having a nice dinner and like being cozy and comfy. But for like an Aries moon, it's like, go, go, go. <laughs> it's yeah. more based does that relate to you it's so strange that you should say this because obviously we were closed for well not obviously we were closed for five months Mm -hmm. um like longer than other salons because we work on the face so it was like five full months which is like a really really long time like it's almost half the year and we had just expanded I'd just taken on like two new units and we were growing the business we did that in February and we closed in March Mm -hmm. And things were going really well before lockdown. Like everything was going good. Like everything was very positive. And then we closed and everyone was like, oh my God, are you okay? Are you okay? And I was like, actually, like, I feel quite excited about the potential here. <laughs> <laughs> and my team, I think they thought they were just going to have like a nice time. And I was like, guys, I've got so much, like I've yeah. got so many good ideas <laughs> to like put into practice. Mm. And I like, I've said it since coming back. Cause obviously everyone's like, oh God, like poor you. Like we thought of you, are you okay? And we were, fine because I think that we really tried to like make the best out of the situation but Mm. I was like I know it sounds strange and obviously I wish it hadn't happened I'm not saying that like I wished it to happen (laughs) but I was like I did kind of enjoy the challenge I was Mm. like we were very settled into what we were doing we were getting good reviews we were getting like good publicity I'm not saying that it was boring like there was still like a lot to do and there's still a lot to do but it was something that I was feeling quite comfortable in and I was like actually this was something completely out of all of our comfort zones we were like pushed to do things that we you know wouldn't have naturally done mm. and actually like I did kind of enjoy the challenge every week like looking at the numbers I'm like oh my god this is actually like working yeah so that's quite fun <laughs> yeah that, and that's thing for when it's your moon sign that's what nourishes you as well like yeah. that's what makes you feel kind of like at home so that challenge and that kind of like right, what can we do like making things happen taking action yeah that's like, so interesting mm. Yeah, that is it. And then like there were some days where I was like, I'm doing it all wrong. Like I saw like my other friends who are salon owners like mm. sat in the garden, like drinking cocktails. And I was yeah. like, when's the next workshop? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody has their own. I, I think that's so easy done, isn't it? Like I know um, I around the time, like when Luna was coming out and one of my other friends had a book coming out on the same day and like she was on holiday that week. <laughs> I'm like, I do giveaways. I'm, just, I'm like all over Instagram. I'm like, do, you know, doing Instagram lives, planning like all these different things. And I'm like, hang on a minute. Like she's on holiday. Like, am I doing this wrong? <laughs> like, yeah. But, but then I don't I think, think there is any right or wrong. There's no right or wrong. And I think that you have to do like what's right for you. Like, mm. I think that if I had like a big thing coming up, I couldn't be on holiday. Like I just couldn't exist. Like I want to be stuck in, like yeah. I want to be like involved in every like element that's going on. Mm. And I think that I'm always, like, I look at my dad and he's like, 70 and still not retired and like he's still like that now yeah so I'm like I think it's just like genetic I don't think it'll ever be yeah another, <laughs> another inherited isn't it <laughs> yeah exactly which is fine I'm fine with that yeah but, and then, um Guy, what are you gonna say yeah and then what's the other one my star sign what's it's star Capricorn sign? so it's interesting it's so your Capricorn is like a hard are you work. Capricorn no I'm Aries oh. so I'm Aries uh, oh yeah yeah of course I'm yeah. Aries Sun, Aquarius Moon, and then Libra Rising. But so your Cap it's interesting that you're saying like your so Capricorn is like really strong work ethic, like really hard working, like really you were like, Am I stubborn? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm stubborn on your like DM. I mean, Aries and Capricorns both got like horns. Like, yeah, but they that, have like, but like <laughs> they are yeah but it's I I would personally say it's more tenacious it's pushing through yeah. the li- it's pushing through limits yeah so because we were like I was like how does that relate to you like because <laughs> I think stubborn means different things to different people like yeah. I would personally see stubborn as someone that won't move like, and yeah. that won't shift yeah and they're yeah. like this is you know like this is how it is and like that is it but also yeah. stubborn can be that tenacity of like here's a challenge 
I'm going to push through that. Yeah. You know, like with yeah, you, yeah. with the, with the studio and like with lockdown, it's like, I'm going to push through like with those yeah. horns <laughs> and actually bashing down that wall. <laughs> like, yeah. And that, that stubbornness of like, I'm not going to be beat, beaten by this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, yeah. My sister said something the other day and like, obviously she's my sister. Like yeah. she never says like nice things to me. And she <laughs> was like, <laughs> like we live together, we're close, but mm. she was like, you're not very easily defeated and I was like oh my god that's such a nice thing to hear because I was like I feel like I'm defeated every single day (laughs) at some point during the day I'm like well this is the end and I'm gonna give up and it's all going wrong and then you're like oh maybe actually it'll be okay yeah totally but yeah that's the, the like the um Capricorn is the like it's like the mountain goat so it's the tenacity to get up that mountain so yeah it's kind of like for you it's about work and pushing through but making sure, yeah, just pushing, pushing those limits and climbing up. But it's interesting because I had this thing when I was like doing my reflections the other day on like kind of like feeling burnt out and everything. And I'd like, I was like, hang on a minute, what have I achieved this year? And I wrote it down, like everything. And I was like, fuck me. <laughs> I deserve this time. <laughs> but, and like you're saying like, oh my, I'm not going to be 31 soon. Like I've got to fit this in. I think for both of us, probably like, I'm gonna like I'm proud I feel I'm not gonna play it down but I think we've probably achieved quite a lot in one year compared to what some people achieve in two years maybe three years or four years but we give ourselves such a hard time yeah in a sense of like oh you know I'm not doing enough but actually when we reflect on it write it all down and look it down like, hang on a minute like for you like I've opened up like the extra units I've expanded the business taking it online like done all these things yeah <laughs> how many hours that is it's like yeah you're definitely not failing <laughs> you're definitely like achieving definitely and I think that reflection is so important because I can't remember, someone was saying to me that it's like an evolutionary um maybe it was Polly was mm. saying that we have evolved so in the past like we always had to like look at negatives and situations as like a sign of as, as a mechanism of self-defense because Mm -hmm. we can become complacent because there might be like danger or there might be like you know a threat to us that we needed to Mm. be aware of and we although like obviously we've evolved past like there being imminent danger around every corner Mm. um we haven't lost the ability to focus on the negative so you go through life and it's like yeah yeah I've done all of these amazing things but like this one thing wasn't good and like you know that becomes like the focus Mm -hmm. and I do think it's so powerful for like everyone with anything to just write down like all of the things that you have achieved and I think especially like this year for so many people like things obviously haven't you know you start the new (laughs) year and perhaps you have a resolution and you have all of these kind of Mm -hmm. ideas of what the year is going to look like and what you're going to achieve whatever that is and then if that doesn't happen I think that sometimes people can feel like they failed and that's just completely unfair because Mm. I like that's so unfair to yourself I think it's so important to always focus on like what you've achieved and the things that you've done and you know I think for almost everyone not one day goes past where you do something you know every day you do little things that you're proud of even if they feel insignificant or like to other people they wouldn't like be like impressive or anything Mm. it doesn't matter like even things like just like feeling shit and managing to get dressed like that's an achievement like these are challenging times for everyone I think yeah like it's so easy to look at the things that haven't happened but Mm -hmm. it's so important to look at the things that have happened and like you know everyone's progressing it just might not you know look exactly how you had anticipated it would yeah but yeah it, it, I, I think everything prog- progresses differently for everybody it's so easy to get into that comparison loop and like I in one of the um episodes for another phase I spoke to Lucy Sheridan who's a comparison coach but we always compare like it, I don't know if it's a human nature thing or what but we have, that we compare to other people and that's when we get tripped up because we've taken up the eyes off our own prize and we're looking at like what they're doing and like their path will never be our path yeah what they're doing and it's just coming back hang on what am I what are the downloads that are coming through for me to do on my business or in my life like am I acting on that as soon as you act on that that's when you get in that slippery stream and you don't even care about what anyone else is doing so true it doesn't even enter your mind but it's think it's just taking coming back to like like you were saying earlier what am I excited about what brings me joy what are those things that make me feel like me again or what is that 
what do I keep getting a tap on the shoulder to do from like yeah Sarah or my higher self or from your sister or your boyfriend that like come on baby completely like, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> to do this like as soon as you do that I just think that like it just dispels comparison and you're just in that lane again aren't you definitely definitely I think as well like I am a master procrastinator like I'm mm-hmm. so good at procrastinating like I will do like honestly I could like change the world through my procrastination <laughs> <laughs> like, and just avoid like the one thing that I'm supposed to do like if it's like put my laundry away I'll like I'm gonna start a new business <laughs> like literally anything else than the one thing I'm supposed to do yeah but I sometimes think that comparison is also like a form of procrastination because mm. it's like I do it all the time I'll look at like other businesses around me and I'm like oh like they're doing all this, these like cool things and like we're not doing them and like you know they've got this and they've got they've got more followers they've got more money they've mm-hmm. got like whatever but then it's like I just don't want to do the thing that I'm meant to be doing so I'll just focus, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just focus on what they're doing mm-hmm. instead and then like get into a pit of self-pity and then like have a chocolate bar and a glass of wine <laughs> yeah I think that's so relatable um <laughs> I was just thinking, even you're like, I could change the world with my procrastination. I was like, that should be your quote. <laughs> Honestly, it's impressive. I, I think even like, again, with comparison, we just, we create these stories. So we look at people and we're like, oh, they've got more followers and they've got this. So they must be earning more money than me. They must be doing better than I am. And I think we just, again, we're not looking at what's working for us, like what's going on in our own backyard Completely. and like the things that we have to be proud of and the things that we have to shout about and the thing mm. you know is this you have like a hundred lovely messages sent to you and the one thing that's mildly negative will be the only thing that yeah. you hear and it's so <laughs> like <laughs> it's so you know it's so unhelpful like mm. that serves no one to do that to yourself but yeah it's very interesting I think like the psychology around like success and action and motivation is so so interesting mm. and I think it will like everything just stems down to just like be nice to yourself try to be nice to yourself like yeah. it'll be better in the long run and mm. in the short term for everyone <laughs> yeah and like I think what I was saying earlier like what does success mean to you like coming back to that because you're probably closer to it than you realize when we're looking at other people you're not even anywhere near it because you're not seeing what's going on like for you but completely I was talking to someone a little while ago and she was like oh like oh yeah I'm fully booked like work's going really well I'm really busy and then she's like, oh I need to see my website blah 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 it's like babe what you're doing is clearly working <laughs> like, yeah, don't, right, don't, yeah if you're fully booked you're only meant you can do the what you want to you want to do like if that's your end like if that's your goal because really uh, I think ultimately the website is to get you fully booked yeah. <laughs> the yeah, yeah, yeah. Is to get people known. But if you're fully booked and that's going like whatever you're doing is fine, like you don't need to add that extra thing. And I think it's so easy to overcomplicate. Completely. And I think like for me in my like short journey that I've had so far, mm. things get done when they need to get done. And yeah. like I said, like oh, totally. I'm a master procrastinator. <laughs> I will leave absolutely like talk about bad time management. I will leave absolutely everything to the end. But mm. I think like sometimes you think that you need these things but actually you don't need them until you really feel the need to get them done and then like you actually do so it's like maybe one day you know whatever you're doing won't be working for you and Mm. that's when you start to make the changes you start to invest in different places invest your time invest your energy Mm. you know you do it when you need to if you don't need to then you won't have the motivation to do it I don't think and you need those moments when things aren't working like things aren't it's not that you can't like we're saying it's not you get to this destination and you crack the code like you all things work for a bit and then they don't and then you change and then you like you do a course or you stop doing something and you make more time for doing other things like that's that's how it how it's supposed to flow completely and how people and businesses and situations evolve like Mm. by these tiny little changes that come out of necessity and yeah I mean it's you know who would want to just be stagnant for still and stagnant forever like I think change is good and it always comes out of these like little challenging Mm. or big challenging yeah (laughs) that's when the innovation happens isn't it and it just makes you think outside of the box like for you is that you you just opened the ex that you'd got the extra units at Gossamer and then it's like well I need to do more online workshops and do these other things and that you expand and and it's just 
good because everyone wins then because they get to do your workshops from home <laughs> <laughs> definitely it was actually quite like liberating like mm. now that I can look back on having to shut in March at the time I was like oh my god this is awful like yeah. this is so this is like literally what my nightmares are made of mm. and I'm sure that every business owner in the world that had to shut felt yeah. like that but it was actually quite liberating because before I was like, oh my God, I can never say no to anyone and I have to be available all the time and we have to see all the clients and just like really like do everything that we need to do. We cancelled hundreds of bookings mm. and we are still here. Like it's still okay. I mean, I'm not going to make a habit of that. No. It, was liberating. <laughs> <laughs> it was just liberating in the sense that mm. I thought like if we missed out on one client, I was like, oh my God, like the world is over. The world wasn't over. The world was still here. It was still fine. Like, and I'm like, actually knowing that has been like quite liberating. I'm yeah. sounding like I had the time of my life in lockdown. I literally did not. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that like, I learned something. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And that, but I think, like you said, it's liberating, but it's also empowering. So next time you kind of like hit, hit a wall or you need to set that time off or you're getting pushed with your boundaries. It's like, hang on a minute. I cancelled hundreds of appointments and everything was fine. I can yeah. not be open on that day. Or I exactly. <laughs> no, completely, completely. Like I used to be so like, say before when it was just like me, Polly and Anna, if mm. there was someone who couldn't do one of the SAS days, I'd be like, oh my God, like, there's no point in doing anything. We may as well just like shut up shop and never come back. Yeah. But actually <laughs> like we ha we've had days where like there's only been one of us and instead of two therapists or like whatever, it's not that like it keeps it's such a short-term way of looking at it and mm -hmm. it's like ultimately everything's fine there's no need to feel like so stressed about these things it's a, you know it's not the end of the world it's okay yeah it keeps we'll, turning. we'll live to work another day the yeah. world keeps turning. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, gosh, yeah, so, no, it has been liberating. <laughs> yeah i think i think it's yeah it'll be interesting to see what happens next now that we're in like tier two I mean, oh, oh, goodness knows where we're going to be when people actually listen to this recording like, in a few weeks. Oh my God, I know. But, um, I'll probably be doing my online workshop again, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Feel free to join. Yeah, perfect plug. <laughs> yeah. Um, but one of the things like that I wanted to um, talk to you like was about kind of like Luna Beauty and um, like, um, like how the in agriculture like biodynamic um farming is like where they say i think it was like 1950 oh, did i write it down like 1924 biodynamic farming was like a thing but it was actually they farmers used to do it way 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 back when but then yeah. um artificial fertile artificial kind of like pesticides and fertilizers came in and then they realized that it was just ruining the soil. So then they started doing biodynamic um, farming, which is kind of founded by like Rudolf Steiner. But mm -hmm. it's all about kind of like with biodynamic farming, it's like using the phases of the moon to farm. So they would mm -hmm. like sow their seeds on the new moon or like if, I think it was like, if it was, if it was like a leafy plant, they would sow the seeds on the new moon. Or if it was a rooted plant, like potatoes or carrots, they, they would grow it in, like they would plant it in the full moon. But each phase of the moon was like different things and um for farming but also that comes into self-care as well and like beauty and yeah um like they were like one of the things like using different the different phases of the moon so like for example like as the you kind of as the oh, i don't feel like I, I feel like i've got so much i want to say <laughs> and I'm like, i can't get it out and look at you see if i just like projectile vomiting <laughs> like, on you but so what I think what I'm trying to say is with all of that is that a lot of the moon stuff people think is woo woo, but actually mm -hmm. it's a thing. <laughs> Farmers have been using it and even like beauty companies, like we were talking about this a little bit before we started recording is that there are beauty, com beauty companies that use biodynamic farmer farming practices for their ingredients. So yeah. it was like Do Dr. Hauschka and Valida, Valida. Yeah. <laughs> <Later. laughs> um, they so they and what they do is they will um grow their plants and the ingredients like according to the moon cycles because they believe that that gives them better quality ingredients so they would probably yeah. be um fertilized so for example like new new moon would be like sowing the seeds waxing moon would be like fertilizing them and like really nourishing the soil 
full moon would be kind of like cultivating and looking off like tending to it or plant like I said like planting like rooted um um plants but then the mm-hmm. waning moon would be for like pruning de-weeding and like improving the quality of the soil um and then like also cutting they would cut the harvest the plants at different moon phases depending on what they wanted it for so i think that like at full moon because it's like like that's the kind of most potent time that's when a lot of them would be i mean i might be wrong in that but i think that like that is the moon full moon phase when they do that but they cut it then because that's when the plant's the most like juicy and it's got the most like whatever going on Um, yeah so i just find it so interesting like how like beauty brands are starting to kind of like tap into that i mean like those are people like using crystals <laughs> it's like this crystal like infused eyeshadows and different things so people are getting in on this whether they believe it or not or they're just it, some of it is like a marketing marketing yeah yeah ploy. but like walida and dr Aushka are really old brands yeah. like they're not new brands like mm. i remember using them when i was like a young teenager mm. like So yeah, it's really interesting. And like in terms of marketing, like I know them as brands, but I didn't know that they um, did that. So Mm. that's really, really interesting. Um, And yeah. I think it's really interesting obviously I hadn't heard about this but you were telling me about it earlier yeah because who were you talking because you were saying about some other brands that you know they they do their own kind of farming process yeah so like they um are based in America near San Francisco they're called Botnia and they I don't know if they're doing like biodynamic farming Mm. but they have their own farm and they like grow all of their own plants that they um make into their products And they have a professional line and a retail line, but their professional line is so clever because it's like lots of different ingredients that you can mix together Mm. and like really tailor to the client, um, which I just think is so great. And they'll have like seasonal um, products because like they won't be able to like harvest the same plants all the way all all year round. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just think that's so cool and like it's great and it's so important to like really understand you know the same way that we're asking questions about where our food is coming from and the impact that like growing it's having and Mm. what it's doing to the soil and you know where it's happening who is growing the food like is it fair trade where's it coming from like is it local is it being sourced from somewhere else could it be local like questions like this I think it's great that that would be translated into skincare because ultimately it's kind of no different um Mm. in terms of the impact on the environment and the beauty industry is absolutely massive it's huge worldwide so I think it's really cool to know um where all of the ingredients are coming from like I think a lot of a lot more brands where they can are going to start doing like seed to sale so like they grow their own crop and they turn it into the product and they sell it direct to consumer and you know about that there'll be no question that they couldn't answer where I think even like natural brands who are buying all of the ingredients from different places um may not know the exact like full life cycle of where the ingredients have come from so it's amazing if brands can like Mm. it's cool like it's such a it's such an impressive thing to do I think well also if they're if they're reducing that they're reducing the chain yeah as it goes down surely that's reducing the impact on so many levels yeah definitely yeah yeah it yeah definitely and then also they have like full control over it as well so like Mm. and I think what else is really really good is like I've seen them say sometimes they'll be like oh like this isn't going to be in stock for like however long because of the season or the time of year or Mm. whatever or because like something didn't work out and I think to do that instead of being like oh like we're just going to botch something together and maybe the quality won't be the same or whatever or like they'll have to change the price point I think it's good because it like makes you think as a consumer it makes you think about actually what you're using and where it comes from Mm. and I think that promotes more questions to you know the consumer will then be asking more questions about like all the other stuff that they're using and I think that's really important like ultimately the beauty industry creates loads of waste Mm. and like there is a lot and it's a huge and growing industry and I think that change is 
almost always consumer driven and the consumer needs to start asking questions and holding more brands accountable so like when you have these like incredible brands that are doing like seed to sale like mm. you know it's possible so like yeah find l'oreal is probably never gonna you know that's not going to be them they're massive brands it's a yeah. completely different thing but like at least you can say it just start as a consumer it like makes you start thinking and questioning mm. which is really important i think yeah and i think being an activist with where you spend your money yeah definitely way, like because i think i like i was saying earlier with the products that i'm using i would much rather use a pro- product that i either like a small business that was like or they have the similar values and ethics that I have like it's so hard like I get um like brands like oh do you want to collab what do you want to do these things it's like sorry you you and I felt like it was a test the other week because I was like oh <laughs> you come in and they're like really cool opportunities it's like they test it they they test on animals or like even though they don't most of the time they don't but they still they sell in China so they have to test on yeah. animals it's like sorry like I can't like I can't like it's not it's one of my kind of like non-negotiable things yeah 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 tricky I mean I think though like the movement has started and I think that brands like when you go on L'Oreal's website they have like a pledge to how they're going to become more sustainable and I'm like Mm. is that actually going to happen I don't know but like at least the conversations have started Mm. and like I know that P&G have like, like Procter & Gamble have got like a massive sustainability um, department now. And I know that the they are investing in it mm. because like ultimately it's what the consumer wants yeah. and it's what the consumer is demanding and they need to keep up with that. So I think mm. that's good. And like, if it's going to create change, oh, we've kind of gone off the biodynamic farming. Yeah, but, like, but no, it all comes back to it. It all comes back <laughs> yeah. to it because it's like that kind of ethics of where the products are coming from and, and, and all of that. And um like and even like like I said, just me just saying like I can't use that because of whatever that is yeah. going to go back to the company then they're get, it's just going to be on their radar more yeah, that actually people are asking for this or they're cho- they're declining using this because of this is going on so if if enough people say no then they, like they have to kind of evolve and adapt to that don't they definitely and I think obviously it's a lot easier for new brands because they're starting from scratch so like they can make the decisions whereas like these brands that can be like up to 100 years old and they have like so so many products in their range and so many formulas they're not going to change overnight it's like impossible the investment will probably bankrupt even these massive companies Mm. so like it's just never going to happen but it's great that the change is happening and you know the questions are being asked the right questions are being asked and hopefully mm. everyone is taking that on board because like the beauty industry has a lot to answer for i think when it comes to waste and like you know whatever else that it like testing on animals um yeah. also and diverse like, and, and inclusivity and things like that completely there's a lot of change to be had yeah. i think it's like a great industry and i think it makes lots of people feel good and it's definitely yeah. something that i love and I know that a lot of other people love it that's why it's always Mm. growing year on year that's why it's like a relatively recession proof industry but I think that yeah they have to take responsibility because Mm. it's so important and you know they've probably got away with it for too long I think (laughs) yeah I just think also people I think more more and more people are waking up and I think a lot of people were doing things that they didn't realize was a problem yeah definitely. and then so it's not kind of like pointing the finger because I think a lot of people are just doing things because they think that's the norm yeah and it's only to start people asking questions or talking about it and then they kind of think oh hang on a minute (laughs) could we be doing this differently are we missing something out here complete well like something that I like slightly different but something and maybe I should have known about this but Mm. I just like didn't at all and I'd never even thought about it which like now retrospectively I'm like why hadn't I thought about it Mm. was where banks put your money so like if we're oh. banking have you thought about this no because it's really <laughs> upsetting <laughs> my brain's about to melt I'm just gonna get <laughs> yeah but like all of the big banks like um you know like Santander Lloyd's mm-hmm. like NatWest all of those um obviously keep our money for mm-hmm. us but they invest it in lots of different things and it's literally all like oil and deforestation so we're basically funding that unknowingly so when oh everything gosh. happened with um Oatly mm. and um you know everyone was boycotting them I'm like wait mm. a second I was like we're literally giving every single penny that we have to banks that are investing it in um oil like fossil fuels mm. and deforestation and like I started doing research into it and I was like oh my god like my whole life this is what I've been 
funding and I didn't even know. Yeah. Who, did, did you find out who the good banks are? Yeah. So, <laughs> the um, <important> <laughs> yeah, yeah. so I actually like, this is going to be really unhelpful, but I can't remember the name right okay. now because <laughs> I, you have to I let me know. Come, yeah. <laughs> but there are banks that are um, investing in like reforestation and um, things like they have like, um, like biodegradable bank cards and mm -hmm. like they're just taking like oh, yeah, a lot like more of these things. I know like I literally <laughs> have never even thought like I honestly it had genuinely never crossed my mind at all until my client was like oh can I pay with a different card and I was like yeah and I hadn't seen her card before and I was like what is that and she was like oh I just um it's this bank I didn't want to invest because all of these banks like all of the normal banks are doing these things and I was like oh, I've literally given them all of my money <laughs> like yeah, all right. of my money forever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we all have like you just don't like and you don't know until you know yeah exactly so then I know now that they are starting to try to change that because because I was speaking to someone who works in like banking services for like like one of the big banks and she was like it is on their radar and they are trying to like start to change it because they know that they're not doing good but ultimately they know that like competitors are popping up that are doing good and that mm. the consumers will like have no loyalty to a bank that I don't know like I have no loyalty to my bank no especially if they're not <laughs> if they're if they're shady <laughs> yeah exactly exactly I was like now this is on my conscience like yeah. I didn't even know yeah oh, like that and then I watched like David Attenborough's new thing and I was like mm -hmm. oh god I'm a monster I like, never, <laughs> <laughs> never even realized yeah that's the thing it's just so confronting when you watch these things and you again because you we're doing these things without knowing yeah yeah because people but, don't want us to know this yeah well of course <laughs> like, yeah like speaking about like you know obviously um perhaps just using like crystals or herbs or whatever mm. as like a marketing tool like the banks are never going to be like back with us we're killing the rainforest yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> it's never going to be a selling point so okay. yeah tricky so what were you saying yeah. to <laughs> okay, me? Back, so, we're talking, so I was like going on about biodynamic farming <laughs> trying yeah, to get my yeah. words out um but also yeah so using the phases of the moon for different honestly I feel like I could I I get like this with everyone. Like, I feel like I could talk for hours. <laughs> so at least when my battery dies on my laptop. But so with, so with like moon phase beauty, I was yeah. thinking what I'll do, what I was thinking I could do is like, I'll say the moon phase and like what it's supposed to be good for beauty wise. And then you share a tip. Yes, definitely. Yeah? So, um, so for, we'll start off with the new moon. So I've kind of got in like new moon is kind of supposed to be good for kind of like deep cleansing treatments and like I read somewhere like anti-cellulite. Um, but this new moon is like new beginnings. So it could be starting a new beauty regime or like something that kind of brings like a newness yeah. <laughs> to yeah. your skin. <laughs> what would you Definitely. recommend for that? So maybe instead of like a new beauty regime, if you look at like deep cleansing, people always think about and like, I'm going to bring this back to cellulite and mm -hmm and something new mm -hmm. so everybody always thinks about it like very topically like like scrubbing or like doing something harsh like using an acid or using like foaming cleanser or salicylic wash or something that's like mm -hmm. clean like to make you clean but actually all of these skin cells on are on the top of our the top outer layer they're just all dead anyway like mm -hmm. they're dead skin cells they sit together like roof tiles all of the activity happens like deeper down and this is the thing that we need to be like more aware of so whenever I try to do something that's deep cleansing from the skin I want to mm -hmm. clean from the inside out so this applies I think a lot about like the lymphatic system which is like one of our body's like main detoxification systems um it is all over our body it looks similar to the cardiovascular system it has like lots of little lymph nodes everywhere like along our jaw down our ear our underarms on our sternum groin um and these clusters of lymph nodes have like cells inside that are phagocytic cells so they're like pac-men they eat bacteria mm -hmm. so whenever i think of deep cleansing and i want to deep cleanse my skin i want to like make sure that everything is moving along nicely so like if I'm getting like lots of breakouts like on my chin or like these little points that are like directly beneath the corner of your mouth down to the jaw like this is kind of a key area or like jaws uh, along the side of the jaw 
I never try and like attack it from the outside. I try to heal it from the inside. Mm -hmm. So I'll do like a lot of work in terms of like gua sha, lymphatic drain. Oh, I need to be careful in my headphones. <laughs> lymphatic <laughs> drainage. <laughs> <laughs> lymphatic drainage. Like drinking lots of water, like taking, um, like detoxifying teas. So teas that support the liver. The word detox is thrown around a lot. The body mm -hmm. is always naturally detoxifying by staying hydrated, by moving, by um, like using things that have like nettle or burdock root or dandelion these kind mm -hmm. of like more astringent detoxifiers that like bind to things that you want to be excreted it's mm -hmm. the same in using like skincare so like if you ever see anything with like clays or chalks or charcoals or um any like more astringent herbs like dandel the dandelions burdock like mm -hmm. if you start to look in um the ingredients list you will see these things come up time and again mm -hmm. and they're kind of detoxifying so I prefer to go for like those kind of things internally and externally mm. for deep cleansing so perhaps it would be like a nice time to um, do something like that which would also help with um, cellulite because mm -hmm. it's all linked like lymphatic drainage water retention detoxification um, and instead of like well you can definitely introduce a new beauty re regime mm. I think that's always wonderful but um, thinking about like new uh, like new kind of like cellular division and just promoting as healthy like keeping the skin as healthy internally mm -hmm. as possible so basically like if you're eating loads of crap there's gonna be crap everywhere like, yeah. if, you're having, like loads of, <laughs> if you're having like loads of like processed foods or like mm. alcohol or stuff like that you you may feel like a bit puffier you may get like more breakouts so like trying to just support that and that will just mean that like the skin cells that are being produced are like really good quality and mm -hmm. you know everything's like moving along healthily as it should with no like blockages or anything like that. So you can work both like internally and externally to do like a deeper cleanse but I would never recommend like going in just because it's the is it the new moon yeah, yeah just because it's the new moon don't go in with like <laughs> with like the harshest product like chemical ever. pill like I'm yeah, gonna start yeah, exactly. and shrink it up <laughs> completely like that's not the goal like that will not make you clean like mm. that's not how it works like I always think of the skin as like a plant that you have to nourish like mm -hmm. not something that you have to get rid of or remove or mm -hmm. it's not you know is that we need to take care of it mm, like <laughs> um and so for the waxing moon that's all about nourishing regenerating repairing apparently this is a good time to get your hair cut if you want to get rid of dead if it's damaged or you've got yeah, some ends. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. what would you say skincare wise for like nourishing and regenerating and repairing nourishing and regenerating and repairing I would say like so if you've done like your kind of more deep cleansing before I would maybe look now at like now is the time to do a little bit of exfoliation if you're wanting to like have like um like kind of nourish and regenerate your mm -hmm. skin perhaps you're feeling like a little bit dull or like I don't know you're not like as kind of bright and plumped up as you'd like to be mm. perhaps this is a good time to use like a light acid and then focus on the nourishing so like do a little bit of exfoliation and then focus on like nourishing things like nourishing things for skin or anything like moisture masks or um uh, hyaluronic acids or using something like vitamin c that promotes collagen production we know that vitamin c is a cofactor in collagen production mm. um doing things that's like yeah kind of making everything feel like really nourished and moisturized like you can do it for your whole body as well like I love like treating the skin on my body like the skin on my face so yeah, just, it's just one big organ it's all attached yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly so yeah like whenever you're gonna do whenever you're gonna try and do like some deep moisture treatments always start with a little bit of exfoliation so that can be with like a uh, chemical exfoliator so an acid like an AHA a PHA a BHA lactic acid mandelic whatever you like mm. if you don't know what I'm talking about uh, I have a YouTube channel check out our YouTube videos <laughs> on exfoliation on exfoliators we talk about all exfoliators there um, or like granular exfoliation if you're ever using granular exfoliation put it on damp skin and do like very gentle um, movements no like scrubbing like you're mm -hmm. trying to get to bone like, gentle <laughs> circular motion motions or you could do like more of a physical exfoliation like if anyone ever does any like dry brushing or like body brushing you can mm. get like dry brushes for your face if anyone likes their tools like Foreo or Clarisonic I personally don't love them I know some people swear by them um mm. always start of them. Off. <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're just like little tools that are like meant to be like a bit they're, mm -hmm. they're a bit abrasive so that's right. why they're a bit exfoliating 
um, always start with that a little bit of exfoliation and then go in with the deep nourishment and mm -hmm. all skin needs nourishment like all skins whether you're oily dry sensitive um, whatever you are all skins need nourishment and hydration it's just like finding the right thing that works for you which leads on perfectly to the full moon because that's when your body is the most absorbent <laughs> so oh, really? apparently this is the time to use like rich deep nourishing treatments um or you can have like a massage but um i was reading that if you cut your hair on the full moon it means that your hair will grow back thicker and fuller so yeah. that's not ideal for waxing because that's, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's the last thing that you want if you're getting your waxing done. But yeah, so yeah. <laughs> what would you say for like with your, when your skin is like more absorbent, like, and that deep conditioning and deep nourishing, like what would you recommend for that? Yeah. So if my skin was at its most absorbent, I would definitely go in with the actives at this point. So mm -hmm. like retinol, vitamin C, things that you want to like penetrate a little bit deeper into the skin again that can be like hyaluronic acids um it might be a nice time to like do facial massage because that also encourages like absorption of the products that you're mm. using um yeah like eyes <laughs> like yeah. hydrating around like any dry eyes but yeah i would say like actors like your vitamin c retinol things that you want to penetrate a little mm. bit deeper and then for the waning moon that's about releasing so i've got written here like detoxifying and lymphatic drainage so i guess just using that coming back kind of going back full circle then aren't you yeah so like doing like a lovely gua sha practice mm -hmm. at this point might be nice um you can do it just like it is kind of like coming full circle just like making sure that you're staying really hydrated you can do like full body like body brushing like really focusing on your lymph like mm. scrubs gua sha like lots of like body massage tapping um stretching stuff like that and then also like taking it like a little bit smaller working mm. around the eyes like it could be a nice time for yeah or just like to go and get a facial and have someone else yeah. do it for you <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> i think i'd rather do that um, yeah. <laughs> but what, um, was it, for, have you got any tips i mean you've got a video haven't you for like using gua sha's because you've got some you sell some gua sha's as well don't you yeah so we have two gua sha tools um they are the same shape um as each other but one is white jade and one is bian stones i mean you'll know a lot more about this than me but <laughs> i think like the, we recommend the bian stone is more for like anti-aging like um great for anyone who lives in a city that's around like pollution mm. um as it's like quite uh protective and like antioxidant rich and the white jade i always recommend for like anyone who has more inflammation going on um anyone who's like suffering from more from like anxiety stress kind of like these more like inflammatory responses as it's meant mm. to be like calming and yeah is that right <laughs> yeah uh, yeah i was like, like <laughs> i think everybody like i always think there's no right or wrong with crystals it's like what you for me personally, it's like, what is the experience that you have from working with that crystal? Because yeah. different crystals will resonate with different people. But I always liken it to like comedians. Like yeah. some people will find them funny, some people won't. So some people might find it calming, some people won't. Like everybody yeah. re re um, connects with them differently. But I was looking at, I haven't, hadn't really, I think I, I definitely haven't worked with Bian before. And I was lo up, looking up because it, 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 does it have like, have like an infrared thing to it? yeah so they say that it like emits negative ions so mm. it's like very protective to the skin cells particularly so um it has like antioxidant properties and so that's really good for just like aging in general as mm. we are subject to more like free radical damage either from like the sun or pollution or stress or smoking or like whatever um and to, or yeah like I always say to my clients now because we live in such a polluted area it's like quite a protective stone in terms mm. of like cellular protection um yeah, yeah. and also even because like the white any crystal I would say any crystal that's white is soothing calming harmonizing any crystal that is black is protective and grounding yeah. um so yeah I always often if people are oh what crystal is this and I don't know sometimes people will send me pictures of tumble stones and I'm like I can't like, like I can't tell <laughs> yeah, you what that crystal is you should have taken a picture or written it down when you put it like, yeah, yeah. But, like I have got a section in the crystal code where it's like goes by color so you can tell a bit about a crystal by the color um because of color therapy and I also say for example if a crystal is 
clear and like transparent its energy is more uplifting and activating mm-hmm. whereas an opaque solid crystal is more grounding its energy is slower so you can kind of yeah. see, you know what they're all like about in that way um but have you seen like i was like have you seen the woman there's a woman in la and she does this like rose quartz goddess facial and it's like a f- actual um face mask eye mask. Yeah, yeah, eye yeah mask with like made out of like not just like one big slab of <laughs> rose quartz yeah all like yeah, rose yeah. quartz beads and then I've seen like, them. all over the, like people can wear them on their like chest it's like body, kind of yeah like, like a body armor but made out of rose quartz yeah. i've seen them i have yeah it's like i think amazing. like in terms of the f- sensation when you're having the facial with them as well like obviously mm. like they're so cool and like weighty which is always like lovely like a lovely sensation mm. but I haven't seen her but I have seen other people using mm. them I had when I was in Aubinyan that summer when we missed each other um, yeah Jay my friend Jade did a massage for me there it was like a rose quartz massage and she yeah. used like gua shas and rollers and like I think crystal eggs and wands and I don't know if it's because it was on the island because the island has got like calcite running through it but I yeah. literally felt like I was reborn again after. And I don't Amazing. say that lightly. <laughs> I don't say that lightly, but I literally felt like I was reborn. Um, I don't know if it was just Jay's magic hand or the rose quartz effect, but I think like you said, sometimes it's the texture and the feeling, like the, the coolness of the crystals. Can be yeah. Amazing as well. Definitely. Like we do um, gua sha in all of our facials. Mm. Like as in it's available in, any facial that you book with us and people just like switch off like Mm. it's amazing because I don't know if it's I don't know what it is but like Mm. yeah it's we always do it like towards the end of a treatment and the results are incredible like from a cosmetic perspective the results are incredible from like doing gua sha because it is lymphatic drainage and it's great for muscular release and like it's so like it's very good at like toning and sculpting and de-puffing mm. but like there is something about it that just makes people like just go just like drop down into that mm. next level again and it's mm. so lovely to like watch and facilitate it's also like such a relaxing self-practice as well like we were doing um gua sha workshops and also I have like pre-recorded gua sha tutorials available to purchase on our store oh, and up. yeah <laughs> and the feedback's always really positive Mm. and I think as well like it's just nice to be able like it's quite empowering to be able to do something for yourself and just like like we were saying um how we were saying before we started recording like one of my teachers once said to me like it doesn't really like what matters is the intention that you practice Mm -hmm. something with like that's what makes it so powerful like the intention that you go in with and the fact that you've like chosen to do something for yourself that's going to make you feel good and then like you do feel great (laughs) yeah and I think just getting this that get I can't speak having that crystal healing effect yeah with crystals how how they work is that they have their own vibration they have their own frequency so when we're Mm -hmm. working with them and connecting with them we're tuning into that and because they're so stable it just like plugs us in yeah 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 there's something in that so it's so nice for people to have their own kind of because a lot of people have crystals I mean like yeah my myself included but having ones that you can actually do something with rather than just kind of like having it look pretty on your Uh, mantelpiece or by your bed or tucked in your bra or in your jewelry but something that you can actually use as a tool for self-care but also healing definitely and it becomes like a little like I don't know in the same way that people get attached to whatever they're using like you know their favorite hairbrush or like Mm -hmm. their like makeup brushes or whatever it's the same like with your in gua sha like it becomes like a little part of you and you Mm. like once you are so used to doing it and you you're not focusing on like oh which move comes next or whatever you can really tune into like how you're feeling and like it kind of becomes like I don't know like an extension of your body and you're using it like you say for healing and to make yourself feel Mm. better and to tune into how you're feeling and where you're finding tension it's tension in your face and it can become like an intuitive practice which I think like it's the same with yoga like when you first start it's like oh is it my right leg or my left leg like it's (laughs) really hard to actually like get into it but once you don't have to think too much about like what comes next you can start to then like truly benefit from it because you can get like out of your head and into your body and like just reconnect and ground and like it's exactly the same with the gua sha practice when Mm. you're like comfortable with it then you can really like start to benefit from it above and beyond the cosmetic benefits which I think is 
amazing mm. but it was, you, when you just said about getting out of your head and into your body it feels like such a recurring theme from so many people that I've everybody's practices are so different like um I was speaking to Lisa Lister who's written Code Red she talks a lot about women's health and she talks again like we're disconnected so we're all in our head and we're not connected to a body and like my yeah hip, she again she was saying getting back into your body and someone else has said it and you said it it's like it, it's just this thing I think that we really need to be doing more reconnecting with our bodies because we don't completely even though they're there all the time and we, <laughs> we're using them we're we're so disconnected in so many ways definitely and I think as well like our heads are too connected to things that are removed from us as well mm. which like obviously is a necessity yeah. in life like we can't just become completely like introverted and self-absorbed mm. forever and ever <laughs> <laughs> like, not self-absorbed but absorbed in yeah. ourselves mm. forever like of course sometimes you do have to be in your head but it can just become like all-consuming and I think sometimes like our heads are so linked to our phones and to our emails and to other people and other people's stories and whatsapp and instagram and it's like just like stop for a second like Mm. it's so like it's such a necessity and I love social media and I think it's great like but I just don't think it's good like constantly and it's those things like it doesn't even matter what you're doing but like you say everyone's practices are so different it doesn't matter what the practice is Mm. it's that you get that moment of getting out of your head into your body just reconnecting with yourself not worrying too much about the outside or like the things that you haven't done and I guess that's the difference as well um how we were saying before like I hear my clients going through their checklists of items of (laughs) self-care as if they're chores and it's like what are you actually getting out of this Mm. like are you actually getting uh, anything a lot of the time they're just going through the motions and not connect actually connecting and present with what they're doing completely and it's the thing that they've been told like if you do this then you'll be good like if you Mm. do this you'll be better like it doesn't really work it's like what are you like of course everyone should try everything Mm. out like I think it's great to like keep changing it up and trying new things like is meditating for you is journaling for you like what do you get from it and Mm. you know things are a practice and you don't always enjoy them straight away like sometimes you have to give things time to get into them but if you've been doing it for three years and you're like oh I hate meditating (laughs) (laughs) it gives me nothing but anxiety yeah but it's probably not like giving you what Mm. you need just like that little switch off from the world and like coming into yourself and like just like I don't know it's just like recharging your batteries a bit isn't it yeah totally but it also I think it comes back to what you were saying about what's the intention behind it like if we're doing something because it's part of the to-do list or because like if I do all the things I will manifest the boyfriend you know yeah. like if I you know if I heal myself then I'll be perfect and I'll get that job opportunity but like it's coming from a different place like yeah that's yeah, where yeah. the intention can be off because you're doing it for something that's external rather than like for yourself yeah it's almost like making a bargain with the universe like yeah. I'll do these yeah. things I'll be a good girl <laughs> yeah I'll be a good girl I'll do all the things yeah it's one of my clients like, I remember her saying that she's like yeah I just like I'm doing all these things that like, hopefully the universe will see it and like come through for me I was like don't think it works I don't know I don't think it really works it's not like yep she father Christmas good it doesn't work like that I think it is part of it is like being in that energy of like you're better off to do one thing that you really enjoy and you feel good doing it rather than, and you're present in doing that thing rather than doing 10 things on your to-do list of like self-care yeah like I don't know who's like some billionaire wrote a book mm. I don't know what it was about <laughs> it's a really good it's a really good story yeah <laughs> I don't know some billionaire wrote a book everybody probably yeah. knows what it is but I'm like not in touch with like <laughs> yeah popular culture so <laughs> of like the perfect breakfast like how to like a breakfast the perfect morning oh. <laughs> so like he'll wake up at like 5 30 and is it Tim Ferriss oh maybe him yeah he's not a billionaire yeah okay Tim Ferriss's perfect morning he's just like up at five and he does like everything Uh, like no just Mm. no Tim like have a lion (laughs) like just calm down yeah (laughs) yeah and I've heard loads of my clients doing it and I'm like oh like 
do you like it? But then they'll start doing it and then they'll like not be doing it. Like they'll set the alarm for 5.30 and hit snooze. So it's like already in your day, you've like, you feel like you've fallen at the first hurdle because you got up at 6.30 instead of 5.30. It's like Mm. 5.30 is not a reasonable time to get up. Like has Tim Ferriss told you what he does in the evenings? Like he probably goes to bed at seven (laughs) o'clock. Yeah. (laughs) uh, So like, I don't know, like things don't have to look a certain way. It just has to be, it's like how it makes you feel not like I would be miserable if I had to get up at 5 30 oh, I just morning. can't do like, it I just can't oh. but I was I was listening I admit I might not if someone might be listening to this and be like it wasn't Tim Ferriss it was this other book by an actual billionaire um but <laughs> this, uh, babe, honestly that's how my story is stuff there was this book and it was written by someone I don't really know what it was about but the whole point is like that is that is oh. how I tell stories <laughs> yeah it's because like all of my information comes from like somebody at like I don't read that much because I'm in treatments the whole time. My yeah. clients will just tell me snippets. I've only ever yeah. got like a portion. Basically, no one should ever listen to me. Like, I've only ever it's got like a half true. Yeah, yeah, you, you just pulled out the bit that really matters, though. It's like, just don't get up at five. Don't push yourself yeah. and be kind. It doesn't matter who wrote the book. It doesn't matter how much money they've got. <laughs> like, but exactly. that's the thing that you used to. But I was listening exactly. to another, another podcast with an, um, Joe Dispenza on it. And he was like, we were talking about food and like how people like try and go on diets and do these things but actually the thoughts that we have around the food can be more toxic than the food itself yeah. so it's like the guilt around it so it's like just eat that like and like this is something I've had to kind of really learn over the years because I used to have like an eating disorder so I used to have so much guilt around e- e- eating certain foods and then I'd eat it and then I'd feel guilty and then I'd end up binging and then like hating myself for it. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it yeah, yeah. Pointless where it's like, hang on, just come to a place of like, like neutrality, neutrality of mm-hmm. like, okay, I've just eaten that thing. I didn't really want to eat that, but whatever. Yeah. Gone. Like the guilt is what kind of trips us up. And like you're saying with the waking up at five o'clock in the morning, you're setting yourself up to fail. And then it's yeah. just a slippery, like your inner critic just have this field day from 5 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Each yeah, time yeah, you yeah. press snooze <laughs> like, to not wake up. And like, yeah. it's like, how, we can, how can we kind of like, yeah, just be more realistic and kinder to ourselves and more generous? Completely. Um, and choose what and works also, for us. If you're going to have a better day waking up at, 9 a.m because like you like you work better in the evening that doesn't make you a bad person like that doesn't make you a failure just because you're successful or like your productivity or your like you know sense of fulfillment or enjoyment comes from something different to someone Mm. else it doesn't it's not good bad or indifferent actually like speaking of Emma Gannon that was um something that she said didn't she like in her first book when she was like I haven't read it I need to uh, I think so yeah um the control alt delete yeah I think uh, so I only know because I saw her I haven't read her book but I saw her (laughs) she's come she's come come for facials with us and um she I saw her do a talk Mm -hmm. at like stylist live or something Mm -hmm. like that and she it was about like productivity and she was saying like she hates waking up early and she just like schedules her emails the night before to go out in the morning so like I do that yeah yeah so do, so do I yeah but, and yeah she was like I just don't want to do what I don't want to do and I'm mm. like look at you you've done fine so yeah, like, exactly. think... <laughs> it's more like Emma less like Chris yeah yeah <laughs> Not Chris, yeah, yeah yeah Tim yeah oh my god less like yeah one of my clients was telling me that yeah she was like trying to get up at 5 30 in the morning and journal and go for a walk and exercise and do yoga and I was like this is more than I do in a week and you're trying to fit it in before the working day like I'm lucky if I get a yoga class and a walk and like a journal in in a week like it's too much Mm. like it's too much on top of everything else yeah that's my opinion (laughs) Uh, no I am I'm totally with you oh this has been (laughs) yeah this has been so good so one of the question that I kind of ask everyone like as I'm like closing these conversations is like if you could go back to another phase in your life whether it's to just enjoy it or give yourself a message like what would it be like when would it be so I think I have been like I've been thinking about this yeah. this morning. This is not morning anymore, but it's today. <laughs> and um I think it would probably be like 
oh, there are so many times in my life actually that I want to I know this isn't an answer to the question but that I want to go back to and give myself mm. the same message and I bet in five years I'll want to come back to this time mm. and give myself the same message which is just like chill out like it's okay <laughs> <laughs> Like it's always gonna be okay. Yeah. Like when I quit my job to start my business and I was studying, mm. like my studying didn't I had like quite a bit of free time on my like time where I'd be like writing essays or whatever, mm. free time on my hands. And I never thought that I'd have that after I started my working life. Like I thought that was something that I left behind when I left uni. Mm. And I had so much anxiety around it because all of my friends were like still in their corporate roles and like you know they were doing the nine to five and I was like free on a Tuesday morning like oh what am I gonna do today and I was like oh god I'm a failure and I was like oh you know just this is so bad and now when these moments of like quieter moments or like work's not as busy or like the government shut us down Mm -hmm. I'm like you just have to force yourself to enjoy it because Mm -hmm. these moments are few and far between in life And yeah, they're really scary. And you're like, oh God, maybe I'll never work again. And Mm. like, everything is going wrong. But that's just not what happened. Like, that just doesn't happen. Like, luckily, work does always come back around again. And you do always have busier periods. And it's like learning to just enjoy the moment, the slower moments and to slow down with them, I think is a real um, talent. One that I like have not mastered. But I think if I could go back to any point in my life, Mm. that's like any of these like, slow moments I would have Mm. just like tried to enjoy them more and just like let myself know like these days won't last forever so like you need to enjoy them while you Mm. can yeah that yeah yeah. (laughs) (laughs) but even like you said those are like even though they're different times they're all phases like we were saying part of that cycle of that like Mm -hmm. like that uncertainty it's like going back to each of that phase every time that comes up or at least put it up on a post-it note or something (laughs) yeah definitely and I guess it's like like with everything in life with experience like you do have you know that these days don't last but I think the first time Mm. anything happens you're like oh god I'll be unemployed forever yeah but then like you're not (laughs) so (laughs) like experience does teach you that but yeah Mm. like anyone who's listening who has found themselves unemployed or made redundant mm. or is having a change like enjoy this time because the days won't last forever these days won't last yeah you'll forever. be back you'll be back on the grind before you know it <laughs> praying for lockdown yeah <laughs> oh this has been amazing so katie where can people find you so people can find us on Instagram. Our handle is RelaxLDN. They can find us in person in our Hackney studio in Gossamer City, where we're open seven days a week, offering lovely, lovely facials. And they can find us on our website, www.relax-ldn.com. Amazing. Oh, this is, yeah, this is 